Hi friends. It seems like humans are destroying the earth and it almost seems like nature is actually striking back in the form of disease, extreme weather, murder hornets. I mean, come on. Our home is a beautiful planet full of a diverse life. And there is no doubt that us as humans have a huge impact on this planet and its various ecosystems. And the proof is really all around you and it's backed by science. And if you would like a little bit more help in learning that, I've taken the liberty of adding some links down in the description for you for some videos that I thought were interesting and useful. And there are those who would deny the human impact on global warming. Um, but I suspect that maybe they ate glue or paint chips as children. Or worse yet, they know the truth, but their motives are driven by some combination of money, politics, and or denial. <sighs> There's a sad human trait that I think all of us have to some extent, and that is to not be terribly concerned with things that are not directly or noticeably affecting our lives personally. And especially if that concern means that we have to change things about ourselves or our way of life that may have an impact on our comfort, things that we're used to, or make anything slightly less convenient. This mentality is really selfish, wrong, and short-sighted. We have only one planet, and its health and ecosystems are so important to our own survival. A lot of people think, or rather, they know things are pretty bad, but they think that, that these problems are for future people, that it's not going to affect us in our lifetimes, but the rate at which things are going, it seems to be getting exponentially worse, and there is a good chance that we're going to see some major problems within our life if you don't already count what's going on as some serious shit. What I don't understand is that anyone could think this way and not care, especially if they have children or family. I mean, even if you don't, I don't have kids myself, but I care about what happens to the earth, the animals, and other people. I don't want it to be destroyed just because I'm gone. The survival and thrival of humans and the earth are heavily intertwined. We have no planet B. And yes, thrival is a word, okay? I double checked. So as you can tell, I have some feelings on this topic. And in my personal life, this has affected a lot of things. And I have been trying for a while now to make educated decisions in all sorts of areas. Our daily choices and lifestyles have much more impact than sometimes we realize. And as one person in over seven and a half billion now, it's really hard to feel like our individual choices even really make a difference. I've had this discussion with friends and family and it can be disheartening. I mean, really, it does seem like our efforts can be futile, but that's because everyone thinks like that. If we try to do our best in our own life, I think that it would make a big impact because thinking that we don't matter um, just perpetuates this idea that it's not worth it. But a lot of people feel that way. And if we just tried our best in our own lives, I think we would be healthier in our own right and making an impact, living by example and inspiring others to do the same. Now, I'm not going to lie, it can be really hard, especially in our society, to make good choices. Sometimes we just don't know what effects our choices make or if there even is a better option because our societies are not built on sound ecological practices they're built on convenience instant gratification and the idea that profits matter above all else and as an artist these concerns are still something that we need to think about i have been trying to consider this in my personal practice and this affects what i buy how much i buy and what paints I even use. Now, you probably already know that I dabble in all sorts of paints. This video here is acrylic paint. And when I first started getting into painting, I was using both oil and acrylic. And I love them both for various reasons. They're, they're quite different. And if you don't really know the differences, I do have some other videos that might be able to help guide you in that. But thinking about what goes into these paints, I think is important when you choose what kind of artist you want to be and what you want to actually practice. So I've mentioned it before, I think in um, other videos, and it probably won't be the last time that I bring it up, but I started um, oil painting long ago and I loved it. I absolutely loved it, but I quit using it because the fumes got to me and I thought ecologically that it wasn't very sound to use them. I, I thought that it was very bad for the environment. And this is actually true to some extent. There are a lot of debates on this and you may or may not know where to look or what those effects actually are. But basically, most types of paints uh, at 
physical paints, obviously this doesn't apply to digital painting, are ground pigments that are suspended in something. So in the case of oil paints, you have your powdered pigment and then you have the vehicle, which is often linseed oil. Um, some brands may vary. I think some brands like M. Graham may use walnut oil as their vehicle. Um, and depending on what quality you buy, you might actually have extra fillers. But at its most simple, oil paint is oil and powdered pigment. The toxicity and the problems come into play when you start adding to that. And that can be in the form of mediums, which can be um, po toxic petroleum-based or using mineral spirits or turpentine. That is where things get kind of bad. So these things are highly toxic if used incorrectly and they are not good for the environment. When you use them, you have to have properly ventilated areas for your own health. And when you dispose of rags or anything or the liquids themselves, if you are done with them, you need to make sure that you dispose of them properly because they cannot be put down the drain and contaminate water systems. They're highly flammable. And even though certain things like odorless mineral spirits say they're odorless, you really do need to have good ventilation um, or you can experience some long-term health problems. Uh, I myself am very um, sensitive to that. I love oil painting, but I can't really do it too much even in ventilated areas because I get headaches and it, I just can't deal with it. So I have been moving over to a safer natural studio practice, which I will have videos on that in the future if you are interested in learning more about that. So inherently oil paint is not bad, but you have to do it properly and think about what you are doing with your materials. Now there are some types of pigments that are actually toxic and those can be like cadmiums and a few other that I'm kind of drawing a blank on, but it's not that hard to find. And I do have another article that I thought was useful linked down in the description if you're interested. So when you have oil paints, the way that they harden is actually oxidization. The oil is not evaporating, it is actually hardening, creating a paint film. And then there are acrylic paints, which many people think are the safer option because um, you don't typically smell anything. And these are the same types of pigments as oil, but their vehicle is an acrylic polymer emulsion, and then they're like bound with an uh, acrylic polymer. So when they dry, parts of the non-pigment parts um, actually evaporate. So a lot of those paints contain trace amounts of ammonia and formaldehyde. So that is actually being released into your work area. And sensitive people can sometimes find some irritation, but usually we don't even perceive it. It's not easy to smell. So we think that they're completely safe. And um, they are rated as safe to work with because, I mean, typically using them correctly is not that hard or dangerous. But you should be aware of what you're using and the effects on your personal health and the world around you. So when we use acrylic paints too, we tend to wash our brushes with some kind of um, cleaner and that we just do that in the sink. We're taught that that's okay, but I personally have wondered if this is actually good because if acrylics are basically types of plastic are we further contaminating our water sources with microplastics and the evidence kind of points to yes we have absolutely saturated the earth with plastics and even on the micro levels so it's something to think about I thought for a while that acrylic was the safer way to go particularly because its health effects were very obvious on myself, but it goes to show that a lot of research can really pay off. There are, of course, other paint types like watercolor and gouache, and I'm not too sure about the ecological impact of those. It kind of seems like that may be a little bit healthier and safer for yourself and the environment, but again, it, I think there needs to be more research on my own part and in general because as artists I don't think we're taught enough of this kind of stuff. In college I certainly wasn't taught a lot about the ecological impact of our choices when it comes to creating art. So you may be thinking well maybe digital paint is the way to go because you're not dealing with any of that but there are still some things to consider like how your device is produced. Is it produced in factories where they exploit workers with low pay and poor working conditions? 
and the energy that goes into actually running your device. There are so many factors and I can't really say what is best or that any of these are wrong to go ahead and do. I know me, I use like all of these things, but I try to be smart about it and think about what companies I'm supporting and what their philosophy on the world and their place in it is. Just something for us all to chew on a little bit. I We are getting to a point of no return according to a lot of scientists so i just want to throw this back to you what do you guys think about it do you think we have come to a point where there is absolutely no saving the earth and if you think we can change things um what are your thoughts how do we do it are you doing things to improve the situation i really do believe if you're not actively trying to be a part of the solution you are part of the problem apathy is just not good it doesn't help anyone and ignoring these problems are not going to make them go away i hope this video wasn't too stressful or dark i know we all are dealing with a lot as it is i hope you guys are continuing to stay safe happy and healthy and creating beautiful work um take care guys and see you next time